Uh, welcome, guys. Yeah, so uh, this video, uh, we talk about the compact set. Okay, so probably the most important uh, uh, idea in analysis. Yeah, so in this video, I only uh, restrict myself talking about the metric space. So it's a compact set in the metric space. So uh, actually, you can talk about the general compact set idea in the general topological space, uh, maybe in the future. Okay, so definition. Uh, so we first define, uh, so let's say open cover, so open cover of, let's just take a subset uh, E of X. So open cover of E uh, means that uh, uh, there is, is the called G alpha, which for there's a, so there's, so there's a, a set of open sets such that E is a union of G alpha, okay. So A can be uh, countable or uncountable or whatever, right? So A can be arbitrarily large. So if E can be written as a subset, E is a subset of all the, uh, uh, all the union of these open sets. So these are open. Then the E is, uh, this, this is called open cover. Okay, open cover. Okay, so definition. So E is compact, compact means that for every open cover, open cover of E, uh, there is a finite sub cover. Okay, there's a finite sub cover. All the way, so what I'm saying is that uh, you take any open set like this, right? Take any open cover of E, then you can find the alpha one, alpha two, alpha N, such that uh, E is just, G alpha one, G alpha two, intersection G alpha. N. So any any finite any open cover must have finite sub cover. Okay, so this is called a compact. Okay, so uh, in order to prove something is compact, which is uh, looks very difficult, right? Because you need to show that every every uh, thing. Uh, every, you need to prove that everything is a. Uh, you need to prove this every, you need to prove that every open cover uh, contains a finite sub cover. So this is uh, the difficult part. Okay, so maybe, but uh, we can see something example, uh, some example which is, or well, one example which is non-compact. Uh, maybe, yeah, okay. So first example is that uh, you've taken the all real lines, right? So obviously that real line can be covered by all the uh, open interval like this, and from one to infinity. Okay, so it's easy to check that for every x belongs to real number, you can always cover by a large n, right? But the problem is that this is, so this is open cover of x r, right? Open cover, but uh, there's no finite sub cover, right? Because if you only take finite sub cover, let's say you take n1, you take n1 uh, right, intersection with uh, n2 minus n2, right? Then finally become the, um, let's say the max of n1, n2, Right. But uh, this is finite, right? So this is some finite number, which cannot be R, right? Okay, so the second example is that, uh, so R is not compact. Second example is that uh, maybe uh, you take the, maybe you take the open interval. Okay, so easy to, obviously that uh, this open interval is also covered by, uh, can be written as, let's say, We can do this, mm, right? So this open interval look uh, looks like this. Right? So, uh, for first one does not contain zero zero. When n equals two is half, right? So, uh, let's see. Yeah, so it contains it starts to grow, right? It grows, 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 grows. Okay, but uh, there's no finite sub cover, right? Because you only take finite parts, then uh, you will miss something uh, very close to one. Okay, so uh, this is I is non-compact. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's give uh, some uh, uh, like the property. Okay. So remember that uh, I remember that I say that uh, I give a definition. Let's say if you take e to subset of y and subset of x. And uh, so I give a definition that we say E is relative open, relative open in Y. If and only if uh, there is, exists G is an open set in X, 
right, such that the E is G in the section one. Okay, so uh, there's an example that, uh, so there's an example that, uh, so E is relatively open in Y, do not mean that E is open in X, because E is just defined to be G in the section with Y. Okay, so what I'm saying is that, uh, if, so if you have the, the chain, like E subset of Y subset of X, E is open in Y, so uh, I say E is open in Y, I mean E is rarely open in Y. So E is open in Y, do not imply E is open in X. Okay, so a simple example is that you take the, the uh, R2, right? And then you take R. So you take, a, let's say the zero one interval, which is a subset of R, subset of R2, right? So this is open, right? Because in the real number that it is just open interval, so by definition it is open, right? But which is not open in R squared, right? Because in zero one, you take any open, you take any open ball. That open ball do not that you cannot, uh, your zero one interval do not easily is open ball, right? Because this open ball contains some vertices. Uh, sorry, contains some uh, vertical, uh, contains some what, right? So which tell you that the, uh. uh if you are open in a small space, do not imply that you open in a larger space. Okay, but the fact is that uh, the fact is that uh, uh, so we uh, we will prove it. So e y x, if e is relative compact okay, in, in y, then the e will relatively compact, or e will just compact in x. Okay, so the same definition. So if E is relative compact, uh, compact Y means that uh, there's open class of cover and the, uh, sorry, any open cover of, of Y uh, to E will get the sub cover. Okay, find a sub cover. And you can use this to prove this fact. So compact is a better, uh, better and powerful idea uh, compared to the open. Okay, so proof. By the way, this is if only if. Okay, so if E red company Y is red in company X. Mm, mm, let's see, okay. Okay, so let's see. So if E is compact Y. Okay, so let's, let's prove the, uh, the, uh, the first direction is supposed that is E compact X. Okay, so uh, that means, uh, let's say, uh, so we need to prove what? We need to prove that the E contains the finite subcover, right? So let's suppose, suppose E is covered. So E is covered by, let's say, Y alpha, uh, V alpha, right? In this uh, union of V alpha, which V alpha is open relative, right? So since E is uh, relative to, uh, uh, y, right? So suppose that uh, let's suppose that we, we get something open which is relatively open to y, right? And then we we hope to show there is a finite sub cover. Okay, so by a previous definition, so a previous theorem that v alpha is open relative to y means that uh, there is this g alpha such that the v alpha is y intersection with g alpha. Okay, so put in here. So you get your uh, e is a uh, intersection with alpha, y intersection with g alpha, right? But you can forget about it, still be y, right? The right, right is this. Okay, so E, right? So you get it. So from this, uh, from this now, right? So from this now, E is a open, a open cover of X in X, right? So there is, it is the finite sub cover. So from this, so E has a finite sub cover. So g alpha one, g alpha two, g alpha n. Okay, and uh, so you can put it back, right? So from here, you know that E is a, inter a subset of alpha, like uh, uh, alpha i, sorry, so i from one to n, so I just a little bit lazy, so y intersection with g alpha. Okay, so you use x to control y, okay? So by definition, you prove that E is uh, compact relative to y. Okay, so conversely, so conversely, we, we, conversely means that we start to uh, suppose, so we suppose uh, E is uh, open, is compact relatively uh, relative to, uh, let's say, uh, Y, right? 
you know, we will hope to prove that uh, uh, it's compact of uh, uh, compact uh, to X. Okay. Okay, so let's suppose suppose you get some G alpha, right, which is open in X, and the cover E, right. So you get E is this, and we hope to uh, prove that uh, find the find a sub cover, right. But we can just intersection with Y, <laughs> so E is just alpha G alpha intersection with Y, right. But by definition, there is only this is open set relative to E, right. So Basically, it's relative to y, so there is a finite subcover, right? Because I should view g alpha intersection with y is an open set in y, okay? So, finite one. So, we got some g alpha i intersection with y. Okay, so, but this just show that e is a subset of g alpha i. So, we get a subfinite cover of x. Okay, so the next theorem is a compact set uh, pros. Okay, so if S is compact, oh, so I, now I use K, right? Because just for, so K is compact, uh, so K is closed. Okay, actually one can prove, easy prove that K is uh, compact means that K is closed and bound. Okay, so this is the first, uh, this is a very important idea that uh, you should remember. Right, so the previous example that the real number is not is not bound, right? It's not bounded, so which tell you that the uh, R is not compact. Okay. Also, uh, zero one, zero one, right? Zero one in open interval is not closed. So a uh, zero one interval is not compact. By the way, I use CPT to uh view as a abbreviation of the compact. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, maybe this okay. So let's maybe prove prove both. Oh, prove, oh by the way, this is uh, metric space, right? So K is a convex set in the metric space. So there's a distance idea, right? So once you have distance, then you can do some crazy things. Okay, so let's prove uh, K is closed. Uh, sorry, let's prove uh, K is bounded uh, because bounded should be uh, very uh, simple. Okay. Right, so let's imagine that you get some k here, right? And uh, I can so for each z, uh, for each point x, right? I can create a ball with the radius. Let's say one. Okay, so k is the open ball. It's a open cover of let's say b. Uh, for each radius, choose one x, which x belongs to k, right? So k is a subset of the. Sorry, so this is open cover, right? So K is compact, so there is a finite subcover. So I can find a point, let's say B1, X1, union B1, X2, B1, Xn, right? And uh, so this X1, X2, Xn belongs to K. Okay, so you can, so basically you can find some ball. Let's say you get some finite ball which already cover this K. Okay, so obviously uh, the any points, any points in K, right, cannot exist this this radius, right? Because you can control the distance. Okay, so for x belongs to K, the norm of x uh, should also equal to, uh, let's say, maximum of x1 at 1, x2 at 1, x and at 1. Oh, by the way, this norm is uh, this norm should be viewed as a uh, so my uh, distance from x to the zero. Okay, yeah, I mean this is just the picture. Okay, so and and you might think, oh, there's no zero, uh, there's no zero in the metric space, right? Uh, but it's fine. I can pick up any point p, so I can just change zero to any point p. So I just pick p belongs to uh, belongs to x. Okay, so whole so whatever x however x you can do so you can define it so this can be abstract right the d1 x1 p plus one d x2 p plus one d x n p plus one okay yeah so yeah so proof so from here that you know that the k is bounded bounded okay so second case close
Yeah, this is a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit difficult uh, for you to think. So suppose K, right? In order to prove K is closed, we, we hope to show, right? We hope to show K complement is open, right? Because the definition of a close, one definition of close is that the complement of this set is open. So we pick up some uh, some guy here, right? Some guy here, which is not in, not in X, not in K, right? Okay. Mm. Uh. Okay, so uh, how to prove it? So let's say, that, so let's see, uh, we pick up, I mean, I pick up, I pick up a, an element called Q, which is in K, and I pick up another element P, right, which is not in K. So I fix P, so now I fix P. And the various k, uh, various this q, right? So I uh, let's say uh, the distance is dpq, right? So I create a, a ball which with radius less than. So let's say we create a ball, right? So radius, let's choose radius less than a half dpq. Okay, so this is still very easy, right? So you can start from here to see say, that the k is just the uh, uh, covered by this uh, this ball, right? Iterate all the q. So let's say Q belongs to K, the radius R uh, with Q, which for each, so this is R of Q, and R of Q choose to be less than half dB. So this is open, because open ball and the K is uh, covered by, so K is covered by this ball, right? So for each Q, you create a ball, you create a ball, right? You create a ball. Okay, but uh, there's only finite one, right? Because you can only use the, you can always find a finite subcover. Okay, so K is actually by, uh, let's say, a finite Q, right? So you get um, Q1, QI, maybe uh, let's say, I from one to N, let's say uh, B, R, QI, QI. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's maybe define this to be uh, WQI, this open ball, right? So K is a uh, WQ1, WQ2, WQN, right? So let's call this guy uh, W, okay? And then uh, let's, and I can, okay, so yeah, right? So, Okay, yeah. So this this so uh right. So uh, so let's let's see. So this is the ball, right? So for each W Q, right? So for each each open ball, right? So for each W Q, I can create another open ball called V Q, right? right? So let's see. So this is Q, right? This is P. Right? So you 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 create some ball called the W Q, and I can create a ball which is the same radius, right? Called V Q. Okay. Okay, so we, we can we will have the VQ one right and the VQ two which corresponding to okay so I can define a let's define a V to be VQ one intersection with VQ two intersection with VQ one so notice that all these are open right so finite intersection with a finite intersection or open set is open so V is open okay and the V is so uh, V is open name so all V is open neighborhood. Of P. Okay, so notice that by picture that the uh, VQ do not intersection do not intersect with WQ, right? Right. Each so VQ do not intersection with WQ, and also uh, these points, right? You create this. Okay. Uh, so we we pick out their intersection, right? So so from here you you can see that the V does not intersect with W. Well, so basically V union as uh, intersection with W is empty. Okay, by, by the picture, okay, by, by, by this uh, construction. But, but this means what? It means, it means P is open, right? Because for each P, you can always find V is open neighborhood of Q. Okay, so now uh, done. 
Okay, so now you see the the why the finite is important, right? If finite is not important, if if finite is if you don't have finite, then you cannot prove, you cannot count, you cannot say that this b is open. So since it's compact, so there is a finite w, so you can create finite v such that uh, this v is open, so you can prove that uh, it is compact. Okay, so yeah, so this just say so v is open. Let me just write down. So from this, you know that uh, so any point of uh, k of complement is open, right? So which, uh, sorry, it's interior, right? Because you can find open neighborhood which cover it do not intersection with k, right? Because this tell this just tell you v is that's a subset of kc, right? Because k is covered by w. Okay, so from here you know that uh, kc is open. K complement is open, which means k is closed. Okay, so what we have show compact implies closing bound. Okay, so in a matrix space. Okay, so there is another famous theorem called Henry Borel. Uh, we will prove in the future. Actually, I already have a video prove it, but uh, I will prove it again. So Harry Borel theorem in the, so the theorem says in a Euclidean, uh, in the Euclidean space, uh, com, uh, converse is true. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the compact implies if you only if close and bound. In, so in the real space n dimension, compact, uh, if you only close and bound. Okay, so in order to prove this, we need to have some uh, idea that's called you. So we need to have some uh, tool that's called wire trust. Uh, well, you guess we need to, like, we get some theorem called wire trust theorem. I you know, so we need to talk about uh, uh, maybe the Cauchy sequence and also, uh, yeah, some, something related to sequence. And uh, we can prove it. So this is not very, very non-trivial thing to prove. But also there's a there's an idea called sequentially compact, but I will not touch in this video. Okay. So just for reference, if you check you're interested, you can go to check a thing called the sequentially compact. Okay, and the sequential compact is another compact idea which is very close to compact and in the metric space actually they understand. Okay, but they're very hard to prove. You need to use a thing called the back set to prove it. This is true. Okay. Okay, so next time uh, we took about uh, we keep talking about a compact set. And uh see you guys uh, next video. Bye bye.